Firstly, get your fire clean if you have a dirty fire. For example, if you use coal, make sure you cook over your coal so you get coke and get a clean fire. If you have a gas forge or a charcoal forge or coke, then of course there's not much you can do. So, that's what you should do. You should also have safety gear, wear something protective, maybe something over your arms, or you don't have to mind sparks. If you like sparks, then don't, but otherwise you should wear some safety gear. Wear glasses. If needed, wear gloves. I rather don't. I rather burn myself than that the shit gets into my glove and burns me even worse. So, that is just your own decision. Well, what I'm going to weld is some 8mm square stock. I'm pretty sure that you guys, especially the beginners, will have some stock leftovers. Let's say you bought about 3 feet, that's about 1 meter, and you're left with scraps. You're like, uh, this is all too short, I cannot use it. Well, now I'm going to demonstrate to you guys how you can weld this together and reuse it. Because if you cannot put this to use, it's actually a waste of material and so your money. So if you can put it back together, you can reuse it and actually be a real smith. Because that's what the smith used to do or should do, reuse his old materials instead of buying or making new. That's a big waste of material and time and there's money. So the first thing I'm going to start with is of course first lighting my fire. The fire doesn't have to be that clean yet. But firstly, I'm going to heat it up. Just imagine it being lit. The blower is very noisy so I'm not sure whether you will hear me. But let's say I'm heating it up and I'll take it out and I make sure about this portion is hot. Only about this portion. So you can upset this and forge your scarf. So you can get a good bond later when welding. setting them, I will have to scarf them so that they will overlap well and then they can weld well. Because I can weld them like this, but there are pretty high chances that they will stick and then they could break off later because there's a big portion here that is not touching the rest and also the bottom piece. So I will have to scarf them. I will do that with a bottom tool or a hardy tool actually. Because my end for at least this one doesn't have very sharp edges. So I will have to go to this. If you have an anvil with sharp edges, you can do it on those edges. Otherwise, I suggest you make a hardy tool with sharp corners or make something that fits in the vise with sharp corners. So
Okay, we're almost ready for welding, for forge welding. But before we're going to put them in a the fire and heat them up and flux them, we first need to clean them. So make sure when we make the bond, there's no crap between it. Because if there's crap between that, the weld will fail. So it has to be clean. And the way you do it is just by filing or grinding and making these parts on the inside a bit round. Because when you make them round, it will flatten out and it will squeeze out all the shit and all the crap that's between there. Instead of if you leave them flat, there's a chance that it will form a sort of cave and then, it, then everything will be trapped in it, causing the weld to fail. So that is something you should mind. And that is how it should look like. Getting really tight. So you can put one down and put the other over it. And then you can weld them. Before we're going to continue welding, I'll first briefly show what the sand actually looks like. It's really simple beach sand. It's the same crap you can buy in stores for children to play in. As simple as that. When it gets in contact with the hot iron, or steel I should actually say, it reaches a temperature and then it will just melt. Forming a fine glaze over it that sort of can resemble syrup. It looks like syrup on it, of course, glowing hot, but it sort of looks like syrup, and it actually looks like this. Even before you're going to attempt to weld, you should be able if they're sanded, so fluxed, to put them on top of each other and then they should stick together when you're doing that. These are just two pieces of ordinary rebar, just for the demonstration that they should be able to stick together without even trying to weld them. That's when you know that you're at the right temperature. Now this is how I, how I will be going to work. Take both pieces and put them in the fire. Heat them up to around a orange heat, orange yellowish, and then either take them out, throw on sand, or just take them out, throw on sand, or do it while they're in the fire. Look for the glaze that should be forming on them. Then put them a bit deeper. So you can make sure that this piece cannot burn off because this is thinner so it will heat up quicker. So make sure this is evenly and well heated. So that when you put them on top of each other, they will weld.
given to the heat, and that's what I'm going to go do now. Heat them up to a full well and heat them well. Yes, I process. I love the beans though. But, uh, again, heating them up, sand over it, turn, turn, turn. So then you see the sparks. Take a good look at it and put it blends in with the color and the board. That's how you know you're ready. I'd say this is okay. One last note though. If your forge does not have a, cl a, a, a clinker breaker, then I do not recommend you forge welding with sand. Because the sand will turn into a liquid and can clog up your air holes. Eventually that can cause your forge actually to stop working because no air can come in. That's the same problem I have with my angular forge because that only has holes in it. And if those get clogged, there's no work to do. So but anyway this was the instructional video. I hope you liked it and I hope you learned a whole lot more.